Whether you're working in Maya or Blender or Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, it really doesn't matter. What's important is how you approach your 3D model, and there's a method to it, right? So in this video, I'm going to talk about structure, I'm going to talk about supports, and how it all relates to construction. Here we go. Okay, everybody, well, we're looking at the framing of a house, as you can see, and the reason why is I'm going to show you why this looks so much like a wireframe of a model. Now, we was talking about modeling a 3D model, but it would be more appropriate to basically say building a 3D model, and I'm going to show you the comparison between the two. So let's just get rid of this. Delete it, and we're going to take a polygon cube. All right. Now, as you most likely know, uh, if we look at a model like this, a polygonal object, and I right click and go to vertex, we have a bunch of vertices, we have a bunch of edges, and we have a bunch of faces, right? Now, let's focus on the vertices for a second here. If I take one of these vertices, uh, the vertex, right? It has an X, Y, and Z coordinate in space. And if I connect these two, I have an edge. If I connect these four, I have the face and so forth. Um, the thing is, if you're building a house, then you have to deal with gravity and you got a structure in place, but you need to support that structure. Otherwise, the house will collapse. Now, that's not going to happen in Maya, right? Because it's not going anywhere because we didn't apply any gravity to it. And by default, there's no gravity. The thing is, though, that we need uh, a structure and we need supports for a different reason, because typically when you're working in 3D, at some point, you probably want to subdivide your model because you want to add detail, right? So uh, let's look what we got here. So if I go in here and look at these edges, these are my structural edges. If I take away these edges, I'll take away my shape. So let's take one and two and three, and let's just hit delete. There you go. I didn't delete any faces, but just by taking away those edges, it completely ruined my shape. So let's hit Control Z to go back. So the structure is important, but in order for me to continue to build on this structure, I need to support them so it doesn't take away the shape. Now, let me prove that to you. Let's go into this view right here, and I'm going to go to object mode, and we've got this guy, and let's say we want to subdivide it. Now, I'm not going to actually subdivide it. I'm going to preview smooth it, but you will see the same effect. So let me hit three. There you go. So we see a dramatic change of our model. So one is our original, three is subdivided, sub okay? So one, three, one, three. Now what's happening here? Now, if we look closely to our vertex, which is right here, this vertex will move inward. Now how far? Well, if we look at this grid line in the middle, right? And we imagine having a diagonal line from this grid point to that one, we'd have a straight shot on this line and let's imagine there's a point in the middle, somewhere around here. Now what Maya does, he takes this point and our vertex point and kind of averages that out in the middle. So that would end up somewhere around where my mouse is right now. Let's see if that's true. Let's hit three. And as you can see, pretty much spot on. So that's what it does. Now, if we want to model something in Maya that stays basically the shape it has uh, after we subdivide it, what we need to do is put in supports. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add some edge loops. I'm just going to go and set multiple and one. So I can put one in here and one in here and one in here. So now we have some subdivision. Okay. We're going to go back in here, go to object mode and let's hit three and suddenly it looks a lot more like a cube instead of a sphere, right? Now, that's the whole idea. So the lesson learned here is that your structural edges need supporting edges. Now, these support the structure to an extent. I mean, it's still not a perfect cube. If we wanted a perfect cube, what we'd have to do is make sure that we had supports much, much closer to the structure. So how can we do that? Well, let's go back into injured edge loop again, and I'll just set it to manual. And there we go. 
and I'm going to uh, hug the structural edges from both sides. So I'll put one in here, and I'll put one in here, and then one up here, and I'll put one in here, and one down there, and I'll put one in here. And I think we got all of them. Right, so each structural edge, right, and that's our original, right, is hugged by a support and a support, by a support and a support, by a support and a support, and so forth and so on. So how does this affect our subdivision? Well, we're gonna go in here to object mode, let's hit three and see what happens. And there you go, basically a perfect cube. Okay, so what's the next step? Well, let's say I wanna add some detail because that's what modeling is all about, right? So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna take a face. Uh, let's go in here, we'll take these. Let's say I want to um, extrude them inwards. Now, as soon as I do that, let's hit Control E and uh, tweak the offset. Let's do 0 0.05 or something like that. You now have new edges that need support. So what we're gonna do is instead of 0 0.05, I'm gonna go to 0 0.02 like this. And then I'm gonna um, go back in here, G to repeat last command, 0 0.02 again. And you're creating supports by doing it that way, right? So I can now hit W and bring that in if I want, right? And by doing it that way, you're creating supports up front and it will help you to maintain that shape. That's basically how that works. Now keep in mind, if you want to maintain this shape that it looks exactly square, you need more topology. And I'll show you what I mean by that. We're just gonna go back and make sure we're consistent. Yeah, like this. And we'll talk about the importance of having an evenly spaced topology. I'm gonna go in here and hit um, enter edge loop again, and I'll set it to multiple and one. And as I do that, it will average between existing edges. So I got one here and one here, right in the middle, right in the middle, we'll do in the middle, we'll do in the middle, in the middle, in the middle. Now, what you already see is that we basically have perfectly square faces, which is exactly what we want. Now, why do we want perfectly square uh, faces? Well, if you wanna add detail and you need supports for them, it's kind of nice to have edges that are you know, symmetrically available on both sides. If I had, let's say, this guy sitting somewhere over here and this guy sitting uh, somewhere over here and I wanted to do something with these faces, it's kind of weird, right? So by going back and making sure that the spacing is more correct, I could, for example, manipulate that. So that's one reason. Now the second reason is for texturing and for deformation. And for that, what I would need to do is take a polygon plane and um, yeah, here we go. So this is kind of high uh, high in sub count. So let's do, I don't know, six by six, that should be fine. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy, control D to duplicate, W to move over, and I'm gonna mess that one up basically, right? So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to uh, take that edge and delete it. And I'll take this edge and delete it. And then I'll go in here and take some vertices and move them to ridiculous places. Um, you know, why not? And let's see if this has any effect at all on our model, right? Let's see, and that one needs to stay down. Let me just uh, fix that. It's not easy to mess up a model. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna deform these. So I'm just gonna go in here and we'll go up to deform, let's say nonlinear, and we'll do a twist, right? Okay, let's rotate that. 
So we're gonna hit E, we're gonna hold down J and flip it like this, all right? And then we're gonna go in here and we are going to open up our attribute editor and um, yeah, let's twist that a little bit. Like that, okay? Then we're gonna go in here, we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna go to um, the form nonlinear and twist exactly the same. We're gonna hit E to rotate, we're gonna hold down J and we're gonna flip it on its side. And ideally speaking, I would want to basically have the same value here. So let's have a look. Let's see what we got. 66111, all right. Yeah, 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 okay. So we're gonna go in here and so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna select this guy and we're gonna set that to 66.111. And there you go. Let's select both. We're gonna to go to edit, delete by type in history, right? And then we're gonna close this out. We're gonna hit five for shaded mode. And let's see if there's any difference between the two. Now for that, what I'll do is I'll create some light. You can see clearly on the model on the right there that there's something funky going on. Hopefully you can see that, right? Now that is because of that non-clean topology. Now looking at the other one on the other hand, I mean, this thing looks perfect. Now let me go in here and uh, allow us to move this around. 3D manipulation, there you go. So you can see that the one with the clean topology is very smooth, there's nothing going on there. And if we look at the bad topology, there's all sorts of issues with it. You see that shading going on, you see it's not smooth and so forth. So yeah, I know it's kind of a complicated way to explain this, but hopefully it makes sense to you guys. Uh, please let me know in the comments if this kind of video is helpful for you. And uh, yeah, let me know, right? So uh, thanks so much for watching, as always. Make sure you don't miss out on future videos. Hit that little bell thing to be notified. And please subscribe if you haven't done so already. That would make my day, right? Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.